hi everyone thank you for joining us for this friday forum yeah today uh, we will be talking about um, basically geoparcy it's a government scheme sponsored by the ministry of minority affairs to arrest the population decline faced by the parsi community in india these friday forums uh parzor likes to discover the many talents of this multifaceted community joining us today is ms vaishtai dabu vaishtai dabu is the principal consultant of integrated services for listening and spoken language she has been in professional practice for the last 17 years she is a listening and spoken language specialist auditory verbal therapist She is one of the five certified LSLS AVTs in India. She is a mental health practitioner using the narrative approach in counseling. She is also the co-founder and managing trustee We Connect Foundation, a parent support group. She is the co-founder and trainer of online AVT, conducting courses and mentoring professionals in listening and spoken language. Thank you all of you for joining us today. Over to you, Vaishnav. Thank you so much, Pearl, for the very warm welcome. I'd really like to thank the Geo Parsi uh, Friday Forums and Parzor Foundation, and a special mention to Dr. Shenaz Kama for uh, giving me this platform. I'm really excited to be here with all of you. Uh, I'm essentially going to talk about years, the doorway to the brain, as said by Dr. Carol Flexer. I'd like to start by asking all of you: Have you ever met a person who has a hearing loss? let me tell you 95% of families of children who have a hearing loss do not have family members or friends who have a hearing loss and probably have never met someone with a hearing loss they may have met maybe you know their grandfather or grandmother or an old uncle but not really anyone else Now I want to also ask you how do people with hearing loss appear how do they come across have any one of you interacted with them let me tell you persons with hearing loss appear absolutely normal because they have an invisible disability that means uh because they have a hearing loss they can easily be missed and if these people are not identified early so if they are not wearing a hearing device you can never make out that the person has a hearing loss let me now ask you how do these people interact how do persons with hearing loss interact without early intervention persons with hearing loss would probably interact using signs or gestures or probably read lips and they would need to face the person opposite them speaking to be able to read lips so typically in a nutshell these people would be interacting using signs or gestures to communicate Do you think persons with hearing loss can hear and talk? Most are replying that uh, they use sign language. Okay, great. Yes. Persons with hearing loss can indeed learn to listen and to speak like you and me. 95% of children experiencing hearing loss have some residual hearing in their inner ear 
which enables them to learn to listen and to speak. Now, let me ask you, uh, and this is the last question, so don't think this is only a Q&A. Do you know how many people worldwide have a hearing loss? Any guesses, any ideas? Four hundred and sixty six million people worldwide have a disabling hearing loss. And out of this four hundred and sixty six million, thirty four million of these are children. It is estimated that by 2050, over nine hundred million people will have a disabling hearing loss. These are statistics by WHO. So isn't this a huge number? Don't you think all of us as citizens of the world need to do something about this? So in my presentation today, I'm going to just talk about a little bit about my journey, the importance and the role of the brain, about early detection, early intervention, the impact of hearing loss, adult hearing loss, and finally, we will have a question and answer session with all of you. So let me begin with my journey. I actually uh, started my journey uh, by studying clothing and textiles. And I started working in the field of clothing and textiles. I worked with uh, some national and some international companies. I loved my job. And my dream was that I'm going to get married, have kids in quick succession, and go back to my well-paying job where I traveled all over the world. I got married, uh, had my first daughter, and then I had my son. And we discovered that he had a hearing loss. So that is where my journey took a little bit of a detour. Because he had a hearing loss, my husband and I decided that we would do everything in our power to make sure he was mainstreamed. We detected his hearing loss when he was a month old. He was fitted with hearing aids and started on the journey to listen and speak. Eventually, he had his cochlear implant. And for the first six years of his life, I spent almost all my time, 24 by 7, ensuring that he was learning to listen and could communicate using spoken language. Once uh, he was on the path, and was mainstreamed successfully, I decided that I wanted to give back to society. I wanted to teach children to learn to listen and speak, just like my son was taught. So I studied, uh, I did my beard in special education with hearing impairment. I went on to do my auditory verbal certification, both of these from the Alaya Varjang Institute for Speech and Hearing in Mumbai, and then went on to do my listening and spoken language certification from AG Bell, USA. In 2007, uh, my colleague and me decided to set up a parent support group to enable us to support other parents just like ourselves and to help them and their children in their journey in mainstreaming. We worked on the holistic development of these children. I worked in various leading organizations and headed some of them. Uh, and now I consult through integrated services uh, like Pearl mentioned, 
And essentially, that's been my journey into this field. The reason I'm telling you all of this is that it is a long haul. It is not a quick fix. I needed to spend six years of my life to ensure that my son learned to listen and speak and was part of mainstream. So that is my reason for talking about my journey with all of you. Now, what I'm going to show you next is what is possible. Hey girl, welcome to today's show. We are your host for the morning. I am 120 and I'm Jihan Dabu. Namaste. इस शो में आप सब का स्वागत है। मैं हूँ 115 और मैं हूँ नुपुर चौधरी। आदाब, कुशामदीन, We Connect Foundation और हम सब की इस तरफ से मैं आपका इस्तेमाल करता हूँ। I am 100 and my name is Aman. Good morning, सत्रीय काल। I am 105 and I am Jessica Parik. Hello, सत्रीय चंचो। and I am Jan Bilmoya, but you can call me JB. The numbers we all just announced are not from any math equation, nor are they random numbers, but they are, in fact, the degrees of each of our hearing losses. But one can't really make out the difference between us and those who don't have hearing loss. So here, uh, what I'd like to share is that this was on our WeConnect Foundation's 10th anniversary. These are five children who have a severe to profound hearing loss, which means that without their hearing devices, they can hear nothing. But because of early intervention, because of early detection, because of auditory verbal therapy, and because their parents worked so hard with all of these children, they are standing here before all of you and comparing this show for WeConnect Foundation. Now let us understand the role of the brain. How is the brain involved in all of this? According to the guru, Dr. Carol Flexer, the ears are the doorway to our brain and actual hearing actually occurs in the brain. So hearing loss is actually a doorway problem. So what does this mean? This means that essentially when our ears are the doorway to enable the signal to reach the brain, all the work happens in the brain, which enables us to learn, to listen, and use spoken language to speak. That is for all of us, not only for children with hearing loss. Let us look a little bit further about this. So we're going to look at a little bit of brain research. Human beings are wired to listen and speak. That is all of us are neurologically wired to listen and speak, which means in our brain, we have several thousands of neurons which get fired when we hear a signal. When we hear someone talking, the signal goes to the brain, all the different neural connections get fired up and that's how we hear. The brain requires a lot of focused auditory stimulation, which means a lot of listening in order to cement the neural connections in the brain and create data files of knowledge, which means that when we listen and the signal goes to the brain, the neural connections get fired. And then these neural connections with repetitions start getting cemented. And then it creates data files of receptive language in our brain. When the brain is stimulated early with auditory information, the baby's 
motor speech centers are activated. So essentially, when we listen, when the small baby starts to hear and starts to listen, the brain is so pliable that the neurons get activated and there is a area in the brain which basically works on the motor speech and that gets activated. Here in brain research, parents and practitioners or therapists create auditory neural infrastructure on which they scaffold higher level linguistic skills of reading and writing, which means that these neural connections reaching the brain are so, so important. They aid to higher linguistic skills, reading, writing, and mainstreaming. So we need the brain, we need listening to enable us to go into academics and excel in academics. Now, how do we develop listening and spoken communication? So we're going to talk first, I've got my presentation in two parts. First, we're going to talk about young children. And then later, we're going to talk about adults. So young children, for young children to be able to learn to listen and speak, first of all, we need early detection. Unfortunately, in India, we do not have mandated new universal newborn hearing screening like the developed countries. So I urge all of you listening to this, if you have any connections, let us create uh, awareness and ensure that in India, we can have a mandated universal newborn hearing screening like uh, abroad. So abroad, what happens is that on the first day or at least within the first month, all children are screened for hearing loss. By three months of age, all these children are fitted with hearing devices and maximum by six months, these children start therapy to enable them to listen and speak. If we can do this in India, it would be a game changer. So let us look at this again. To enable children to learn to listen and speak, you need early detection, you need early intervention, that is, you need to diagnose exactly what the hearing loss is. Then you need the child to be fitted with appropriate hearing devices. And then eventually you need auditory verbal therapy, which is done with the caregiver, the therapist and the child. <clears throat> so let us look a little bit about how all of us hear, how the normal here, ear works. So here, this pink portion that you see is called the pinna. So when sound comes, it comes to our pinna. From the pinna, it goes through the ear canal and it hits the eardrum. The eardrum vibrates. Behind the eardrum, we have tiny, three tiny bones which vibrate in the middle ear. Behind that, what is attached, the purple snail-shaped uh, structure which is there is called the cochlea. The cochlea vibrates. The cochlea has fluid in it which vibrates. And it also has something called hair cells inside the cochlea. So these hair cells vibrate and this sends the signal to the brain and through the cochlear nerve or the auditory nerve. And that is how children, uh, that is how you and me hear. Now, if we have a hearing loss or if a child has a hearing loss, typically there is some amount of issue in the inner ear. That means that the hair cells in the inner ear are not functioning or there is a problem in the auditory nerve. Now with medication, with surgery, all of that, it can't really help. So we now need 
to fit the child with something called a cochlear implant into the snail shaped uh, structure to enable children to learn to listen and to speak. Now let us look at the different hearing devices and how these hearing devices function. First, we look at the hearing aid. So when a person uses a hearing aid, the sound is captured by the microphone. From the microphone through the uh, ear hook, it is sent through the uh, uh, through into the ear canal and the residual hearing which is there in the inner ear is enhanced and that is how the hearing aid works. Now let us look at how a cochlear implant works. So the cochlear implant has two parts. One is uh, this part which goes inside the ear and the second part which is worn on the ear. This part which goes inside the ear, it is surgically uh, implanted by an ENT surgeon. This has three different parts. This square shaped part has a computer chip. This circular part has a magnet and these two wires especially the longer wire has this snail shaped thing which has 22 electrodes on them. These 22 electrodes are implanted into the tiny little cochlea that I showed you, the purple colored thing. Once this is implanted, then after a week, uh, once the, the wound heals, the processor is fitted and the electrodes of the cochlear implant are switched on. So let us look at how this looks. So here, just below the skin flap, you can see this gray thing. That is the internal part of the cochlear implant. Here in the snail shaped organ, you can see the electrodes which have been implanted into the cochlea. Over the ear here, you can see the processor which is on the ear and you can see the coil cable which is fitted from outside. So how does this work? There is an inner magnet and there is an outer magnet. So when a child wears a cochlear implant, when a child or a person wears a cochlear implant, the magnets communicate with each other. So when there is sound, the sound through the coil cable goes to the magnet, the outer magnet and the inner magnet communicate with each other. Through this wire, the electrodes get activated and the signal is sent to the brain. That is how children or adults who have a cochlear implant can learn to listen. Now, this is one part. So here we are sending a robust signal to the brain, enabling the brain to listen. But is that all? No, there is more to it. What is required? What is required is extensive auditory verbal therapy. Auditory verbal therapy is needed after a cochlear implant, which is done by an auditory verbal therapist to enable the parent to teach the child to learn to listen and speak and become part of mainstream society. So how does auditory verbal therapy work? Auditory verbal therapy, works with young children. It is an early intervention approach. Why is that so? It is an early intervention approach because we work with the critical windows of development for speech and language, which is from birth to three years. So what does this mean? There are different uh, critical windows for different types of development. So for example, 
for a person who has a vision problem, the critical period is from birth to 18 months. But for speech and language, the critical period is zero to three years, which means between zero to three years, the brain is like a sponge. It can absorb all the rich language that the caregiver can provide to the child. So the auditory verbal approach works in coaching and guiding the caregiver to provide rich language used in their daily routine, used through rhymes, through books to teach language to the child. So therefore, if children are identified young, they can be taught to listen and to speak. So how does this happen? This is done with a therapist, the child, and the family or the caregiver. The family is, or the caregiver is a very, very large part of the team. They are equal partners in this process. So auditory verbal therapy is an application and management of the technology that we saw, hearing aids, cochlear implants. Uh, it uses different strategies. There are 37 different strategies, different techniques and procedures to enable children with hearing loss to learn to listen and speak. So essentially, like I already said, it is family-centered coaching, guidance, therapy, education, and advocacy. So the parents and the family are taught to advocate for themselves and for their child right from the beginning. It, we also encourage families, the extended family, to support the family and the child in the development of spoken language. Auditory verbal therapy follows a natural progression of developmental milestones in all the different areas, be it listening, speech, language, cognition, etc. Why is this uh, a development? This is called auditory verbal therapy, is called a developmental approach because we are teaching the child the same way you teach a typically hearing child. And these children are taught through a developmental approach because they are diagnosed young. Now, let us look at what is possible after early detection, early intervention, fitting appropriate hearing devices and auditory verbal therapy. The ultimate goal of auditory verbal therapy is to ensure that children with hearing loss are mainstreamed into society and can lead a life just like any other person to reach their full potential. So let us look at another short video. There's so much more I want to do and so much more I want to achieve. I'm going to go ahead the same way as I always have. The smile on my face and the belief and the strength that anything is possible. From a kid who couldn't walk properly and had to wear splints in his shoes to a man who has won 12 national level medals in badminton represented the country six times, including in two deaf Olympics, and won a bronze medal for his country at the World Deaf Youth Badminton Championship. From a kid who couldn't talk properly and had to learn to listen and speak, to a man who's standing here, right in front of you, giving this talk, I am eternally grateful. It has been an awesome journey. Thank you for being a part of it. So here you can see that children can reach their full potential and can become contributing members of mainstream society. They can stand shoulder to shoulder with any other person and can achieve just like typically hearing persons. 
Now let us look at what is the impact of hearing loss if not early intervened or if not worked upon. So first of all, it is access to the brain. If the brain cannot uh, get the sound, a lot of things are going to be impacted. That means the child will not be able to hear, will not be able to develop speech, will not be able to develop spoken communication. Their cognitive abilities will get affected. The social and emotional, their social and emotional development will get affected. And here I'm not only talking about the, a child, even adults. If their hearing loss is not dealt with, these are all the things that will get impacted. Uh, they will start having mental health issues. Mainstreaming will become an issue. Equal opportunities, they will be unable to have equal opportunities like they're typically hearing peers. They will have face problems in relationships with siblings, friends, in their job, marital relationships. Their self-image and self-adjustment will take a beating. Hearing loss is an invisible uh, disability. It causes fatigue and irritability if not dealt with. So now, understanding the impact of hearing loss, let us now look at some of the facts on re and research on adult hearing loss. 40, uh, 432 million adults globally have a disabling hearing loss, which negatively impact their health and quality of life. This is said by WHO. Persons with hearing loss uh, developed between 30 to 40% acceleration of cognitive decline and 24% increased risk of cognitive impairment during a six year period compared to those with normal hearing. There are studies done that untreated hearing loss in adults leads to depression, fatigue, social withdrawal, impaired memory, mental health issues, psychological issues, and dementia. Hearing loss is the third most prevalent chronic health condition facing older adults. Only 20% of these individuals actually seek help. So basically, persons wait over 10 years after their initial diagnosis to be fitted with hearing aids. So while age-related hearing loss has been uh, linked to cognitive decline, a UK study suggests that hearing devices may help minimize the risk of problems like impaired memory or the executive functions. Now let us see what are some of the things that can be done. So here again, even for adults, what I recommend is early uh, detection, careful evaluation, and getting early intervention, which means once you have been evaluated, if there is a need to fit hearing devices like hearing aids or cochlear implants, please do go ahead with it because it can really change the quality of life that you are leading. It is really important for all of us together to educate uh, people about seeking treatment for themselves. One of the things which we all need to understand is not only the person with hearing loss gets affected, but even their loved ones get impacted because of their hearing loss. So changing perceptions regarding hearing loss is critical in increasing the number of individuals who ultimately benefit from early management. 
It is important for us to understand that hearing devices like hearing aids and cochlear implant provide huge benefit. Research shows that cochlear implants report an improvement in the quality of life after the cochlear implant is done, regardless of the adult's age. That means that even at an older age, cochlear implants can be done. Hearing devices enable the brain to have access to sound. So like we looked at right early on, that hearing loss is a doorway problem. We need to make sure that the doorway to the brain is handled to enable all of us to lead a successful life without limits. So now I'd like to share with you a short video of, uh, by Dr. Handa. Dr. Handa uh, has a hearing loss. He lived with his hearing loss for over 20 years, then got hearing aids uh, fitted. He didn't get much benefit with the hearing aids and therefore he decided to go in for a cochlear implant. And let me tell you, it doesn't just work only with a cochlear implant. Even for adults, therapy is required for a brief period. The, care, uh, the significant other needs to learn how to teach them to learn to listen and speak. Because again, as we said, we are retraining the brain. I'm Dr. Handa. I have hearing problem for the last many years. It started about 20 years ago. Before that, I was absolutely normal. And hearing aids started. With that, there was help to some extent, but subsequently I had got my cochlear implant done by Dr. Kirtane. After doing the cochlear implant, there was significant improvement in my hearing and I am very happy with the cochlear implant done by Dr. Kirtane. I advise to people, if you are not happy with the hearing aids, you must explore the possibility of getting cochlear implant and improve the quality of life. Thank you. So we all heard it from Dr. Handa that his quality of life has improved after a cochlear implant. And he is now actually able to go back to his practice and continue practicing as a successful doctor. So now to sum up, what I'd like to uh, do is we spoke about the importance of the brain to enable us to learn to listen and speak. We talked about the importance of early detection. We spoke about the importance of early intervention. We spoke about the importance of fitting the right kind of appropriate hearing devices and auditory verbal therapy for children. We spoke about how hearing loss can impact lives. And we looked at some research on adult hearing loss and how intervention, early intervention, fitting hearing devices like hearing aids or cochlear implant and therapy can help adults to lead a life without limits. So with that, I'd like to thank all of you for being a patient audience and listening. These are some of the references that I have used. And in case you need to contact me, uh, please feel free to do so. This is my email ID. I'm happy to take any questions from the audience. Thank you. Yes, Vaishnai, thank you. It was a very informative session. And already we have quite a few questions that have come up. I would just like sure. to read out a few to you. 
uh, one yeah one question that dr kama uh, has asked early on is how did you detect your son's hearing loss so early yes. you mentioned within a month of his birth so how did you detect it yeah. so, so early so uh, we were actually moving house so my son uh, actually after 3 uh, days of birth on the second day of birth he uh, had uh, some serious uh, issues and he was hospitalized for over 2 weeks and my pediatrician at that point in time had told me to look out for his developmental milestones mm-hmm. uh, fortunately i have an older daughter and she used to wake up at the drop of a pin uh we lived in bangalore at that point in time and we were moving house and he was asleep and the door really banged hard and there was absolutely no reaction so all of us ran there to see you know has he woken up or anything but there was no reaction i also had my mother there with me she had come to help me move home and we kept looking we kept seeing you know is there any response and uh, that's when we got in touch with the pediatricians saying that we suspected a hearing loss and yeah Uh, the next question that uh, hanisha has asked is how early can hearing loss be detected i mean right on the same day at birth or is there a time period yes so hearing loss can be detected at birth and hearing loss can be detected through uh, a small test which is called the auto acoustic emission test the oe which tests the outer hair cells and an abr which is the auditory brain stem response which checks the inner hair cells so ideally next, both of these should be done together the next question that has come up is uh, if we want through geoparsy also to do screening uh, what are the cost involved and please guide us about the people to be contacted so we could have screening as you know geoparsy does a lot yes. of uh, to increase the population so we give you know a financial support to couples who are doing art yes. and fertility treatment so a lot of babies being born and of course uh, across all communities how could we basically guide sure. people to call screening so sure. i'll be i'll be more than happy to uh, help and guide you in fact uh, as part of our parent support group uh, for weconnect foundation we uh, did have a newborn hearing screening program uh, so certainly i can guide you to the right people the costs involved uh, and all of that more than happy to help you okay your email address is being screened and people could sure. write to you for more details sure Thank sure uh, yeah the uh, next point that had come up uh, from ms swapna paul is uh, regarding what you said to have a mandated universal uh, hearing screening at birth she said we could start a petition once again for that she had already done it a few years back and she's uh, you know come up and said she could do it again a petition wonderful where people sign up and uh, you know get yes. it mandated yes wonderful as much as we can petition it would be great and i'm happy to join hands with everyone who wants to petition however having said that there are some state governments uh, like the gujarat government the kerala government they have mm-hmm. started newborn hearing screening but that's not enough we actually need it throughout our country mm-hmm. so thank you so much swapna the next question uh, uh, devashish datta has asked how successful are technological interventions such as cochlear implant at early age how successful are the treatment or the surgeries so uh, devashish uh, i think you saw for yourself the results uh, through the videos so they are extremely successful i personally work with a lot of children uh, one on one and through teletherapy and i have seen a lot of success however having said that if there is a um anatomical issue uh so that means if the cochlea is not fully formed or the cochlea is absent or if the auditory nerve is not there 
or if there is a central processing disorder, then we may have problems. But if all the steps that I mentioned are in place and are followed absolutely to the T, you can see the results. The next question that has come from Mr. Dadi Burjor is, when we see children using sign language to communicate, that is, they are not mainstream, does that mean they were not detected early? Or is it possible that not all with hearing difficulty can be rectified through indication? So great question. Uh, so one of the things is that there is not enough uh, awareness that children with hearing loss can learn to listen and speak. So there are a lot of people who are not even aware of this. The general public is not aware that this is a possibility. And therefore, I ask those questions. Even today, a lot of my own friends still ask me after all these years that do you use sign language with children? So yes, it is possible that these children were not detected. It is possible that these children were not guided right. So there are a lot of things. Uh, also, if children are uh, detected later, then it becomes a little bit of an issue to enable them to learn to listen and speak. Because again, we are talking about the brain and the uh, importance of the brain in this whole journey. Another question to take up from there is, what is the difference between auditory verbal therapy and speech therapy? OK, great question. So auditory verbal therapy works only with children who have a hearing loss. They work with children who are young through the different procedures that I said, through early detection, early intervention, fitting them with hearing uh, devices and therapy where the parent and the family is involved. And here we are working to train the brain to enable these children to be successfully mainstreamed using speech and language. Now, speech therapy is different where the therapist does not necessarily only work with people who have a hearing loss. The speech therapist could be working with articulation issues. It could be working, uh, speech therapist may be working with people who have uh, a stroke, etc. So it is basically to teach speech to any individual. However, having said that, a speech therapist can be trained in auditory verbal therapy and can use auditory verbal therapy. Thank you. The next point that had come up is it's very difficult to sustain speech therapy due to the expenses involved. Are any alternatives available in India? So yes, the, it is uh, expensive. But in India, we do have the government programs like the ADIP scheme and the central government program where uh, things, uh, auditory verbal therapy is offered at a minimal or free of cost. There are also uh, some NGOs who offer this therapy at a low cost. Thank you. Yeah, the next point that has come up was uh, Hearing Dog is a program in England. Do we have any such program here in India? No, unfortunately not. Uh, this is uh, something that we don't have here. And in fact, uh, having said this, one of the things that, again, uh, I'd love to work with anyone is to create accessibility for persons with hearing loss. So for example, the hearing dog, what it does is it assists people with hearing loss who typically don't use hearing devices. Having said that, even persons who use hearing devices at night when they sleep do not use hearing devices. So to create accessibility it would be great to maybe, you know, have a, a dog, not necessarily, you don't really, really need a hearing dog, even a regular dog, uh, you know, a pet at home. 
can be trained to do this. Uh, one of the things I would really say is when people with hearing loss, if they go and live in a hotel and if there is an emergency, it creates issues. So if somehow we can work on creating accessibility where some of those hotel rooms are fitted with strobe lights or a vibrating bed or something so that if there is an emergency, these people are not left out. One more question that's come from uh, Sandhya. Uh, she's asking, is it possible to have cochlear implant for by birth old deaf people? People who are from birth yeah. deaf, but you've got old now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yes, it is possible. However, if the person has not used hearing devices uh, all these years, then what has happened is that the brain is now not used to listening. The pathway to the brain is not active from the auditory nerve. And therefore, the uh, visual part is more active or gestures. So even though you may, uh, if you've not used hearing devices as an adult all these years, you will have compromised results. So one of the things that can happen is that you may be able to kind of just detect sound. But developing speech and language is really not going to be possible. However, if there are adults who have lost their hearing after developing speech and language, if they have a cochlear implant, like we saw with Dr. Handa, certainly they can again regain and live a life uh, with listening and speaking. Excellent, excellent. Uh, one more question that uh, Alka Vaid is asking is, is there any cure for tinnitus? I am suffering from tinnitus. I think. Tinnitus, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what I would really uh, recommend, Alka, is not really, there is really not much of a cure for tinnitus. I would really recommend you to, you know, uh, contact your audiologist and your ENT. Maybe they can guide you further. But there is really no cure for tinnitus. I'm sorry. Any other questions or comments, uh, please free, uh, feel free to put it up on our chat box. And uh, yeah, the last thing I would like to uh, ask you, Vishdai, is that uh, We Connect Foundation, you mentioned, is a parent support group. Could you right. throw some more light on the activities and, uh, you know, what the group is doing? So, sure. you know, we could recommend more parents to join in. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, essentially, We Connect Foundation is a parent support group where we work with children because our expertise, mine and my colleagues' expertise is on children with listening and spoken language. So by and large, the group is for people who learn to listen and speak. We have around 1,500 uh, parents in the parent support group across India. And we have a small chapter in Kenya. Uh, so. The focus areas are we conduct uh, webinars on a regular basis. Two webinars uh, every month are conducted. One is an expert speak and one is to do with involvement of the parent and family, which is the Sat Sat series and the Vidya series. The other thing that we've been working on uh, is mental health. So at the moment, we are running a program for 20 parents, teaching them to become facilitators in mental health, to enable them to then go out and work with other families and help them with mental health. So we have That's partnered wonderful. with, thank you. We have partnered with Umid Child Development Center <clears throat> to be able to do this. Uh, the third area that we are working on is mainstreaming. We have come out with a mainstream guide. 
which is for parents and professionals, uh, parents and teachers, basically schools. And we have conducted uh, workshops for parents. The next step is mapping. We've already mapped certain schools and we will be going and conducting workshops for teachers in mainstream schools to enable them to be able to cope with our children. Because sometimes what tends to happen is that certain accommodations, like making the child sit in the first row or uh, you know, just facing the child, ensuring that the teacher uses the assistive listening devices. These are small, small things that a school and the teacher can do if they are aware which can help the child and the family a great deal because children with hearing loss also have additional uh, disabilities. About 60% of children with hearing loss have learning disabilities, uh, physical issues, etc., along with the hearing loss. So having said this, the support from the school is really important for us. Thank you so much, Rashta. It was Most very welcome. informative, and I'm sure all our viewers have enjoyed a lot. Thank you so much once again. Yeah, and I would like to end the session uh, just with some more information about GeoPRC. Uh, you need to go on our website, that's geoparsi.org, to get more information about the good work we are doing. And uh, every Friday, we have entertaining programs, informative sessions like these. So our next uh, session, next Friday, is a musical evening with the Banshas. So please uh, join us and have a great time with us. Thank you once again. Do log in next Friday. Thank you, Vaish. That's so much thank for you. your time. Thank you so much, Paul. And thank you to Dr. Shenaz Kama, uh, Geo Parsi, and Parzor once again 